Keith, it's time to catch us up on what's happening in local sports with the Hoop Scoop. We do have Larry Cutler and Tony Anzetti joining us on set right this time. So, guys, what's going on? Give us the Hoop Scoop this week. Well, are we going to start with high schools? Let's start with the high schools. Oh, okay. Let's talk a little high school. I thought today we kind of talk about some individuals here in central Iowa. Uh, of course, CISN.TV is who I work for as far as going with the rankings and all that stuff. You can check it out in our show on Saturday morning. And, and I remember you mentioned when we started this in the fall, you said, really, you don't shake no. this out till after the holidays. No. And then you kind of know who's good. And, but I was know. going through some of the uh, stat leaders on the boys and girls side. An interesting one, Des Moines North, you know, it's a great story, what they've done over the last few years and everything. And they're off to another great start this year. Well, remember the good story last year? You were down there at the well with uh, Woodward Academy. Oh, yes. Well, Dontre English is now with Des Moines North that was the star oh. for that Woodward Academy oh. team. And he's averaging nearly 21 points a game. So here's a kid making progress to change his life, and now he's part of that Des Moines North polar bear system. So right. watch for that young man. He was a special player last year, and I'm good to see he's now a senior, and good to see him making those great strides, and he's going to help that polar bear program. Turner Scott at West Des Moines Valley. Kid's short in stature, but, boy, you don't want to guard him. He'll light you up from anywhere in the court, and he's having a great year. Connor Cullen out of Ankeny, a uh, and Luke Vasky out of Norwalk as far as the big schools. They're all in the top 10 in scoring averages around the state in, three, in 4A. In 3A, young man named Shimond Ivory over at Perry. He's averaging nearly 26 points a game. Wow. So uh, he, he's doing a great job. Uh, Brady Elder out of Pleasantville and Logan Gilman out of Prairie City Monroe. A couple kids out of Class 2A in the Central Iowa area to watch for. And 1A, Bradley Fisher out of Ankeny Christian Academy. Uh, uh, they've been doing really well as, as well. They're in our top 10 and a couple kids to watch. On the girls' side, Becca Hittner at Dowling Catholic. Dowling's kind of been, they're going to always be good, but Becca's, man, it seems like she's been there forever. She's now a senior. And uh, Carly Littlefield over at uh, Waukee. And you got some great teams in this area already, but those are two of the stars. Agatha Byer at Carlisle. She's a she's like a triple double machine. I, I call her the Oscar Robertson of Iowa high school girls <laughs> basketball because she can score in double figures. She'll have assists near double figures, and she's also a, at the guard position a great rebounder. So she's one of those triple double type of girls you can watch in high school. And, and Gabby Dowd over at Ballard, who's the number one team, she's been an outstanding player for years. And uh, Gabby Ryerson, West Marshall, and Cassie uh, Chubb over at Saydell a couple of area teams in 3A. Mackenzie Roberts over at Van Meter. I think that's Coach Roberts' daughter from the old days. Now he's the athletic director over at Van Meter. And Ebby Pruitt over at Des Moines Christian, a couple of other girls. So some kids to keep an eye on. And again, starting again this Sunday, I'll always post my rankings at CISN TV and I'll always give it over here to KCWI as well. So I uh, check it out in our Saturday morning show from 8 to 10. Goes back up for the new year starting tomorrow on AM 1350 ESPN Radio. So we'll do that from 8 to 10. Uh, brought to you by Grinnell Mutual. And it's a, it's, a, it's a fun show because we'll interview coaches from around the area and talk about some of the topics, not just high school, but college and professional as well. Wonderful. So. It's kind of fun to see the little stars of, of different teams yes. that you can go check out. And Grandview Christian, by the way, the small school, Katie Hall and Megan Stubbs combined are averaging 46 points a game. Jeez. This team is so. Uh, here's another team that I kind of keep an eye on, that Grandview Christian team. Uh, they relocated the school. Remember, it was Grandview Park yeah, Baptist, Baptist, and now right. it's Grandview Christian. So another school to keep an eye on. So. There you go. All right. Well, it's, what's happening with college sports? By the way, Tony, I like the Oscar Robertson uh, reference. The because half the audience is going like, who? Yeah, Ooh. I know. Yeah. But that's okay. We what like year, What year was that? Oh, what, what year boy, was back in like 1959, late 59, 60, 60 61, 61, 62. He played right. with the Milwaukee Bucks in their in yes, the NBA the championship end, yeah. run with what then was Lou Alcindor right. became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So of course, you remember the team that was far before. Wow. The Cincinnati Royals. Yes. Okay, now I'm really dating myself. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> All right, college, you guys know everybody. All right, let's start with All right, ISU. College What's hoops, going on? Obviously, you got to talk with Iowa State because uh, they've got a big game tomorrow against Baylor. It's interesting Ooh. because you look at the top of the Big 12. I don't know if anybody, if you had a chance to see that triple overtime game the other oh. night with Kansas and Oklahoma, which right. was fantastic. It's just uh, back and forth. Great game. Of course, Iowa State lost Oklahoma by two points on Saturday night, came back, beat Texas Tech, which had lost only once under Tubby Smith, beat them by seven on uh, Wednesday night. Now they take on Baylor. Now, Iowa State's won nine in a row at home. You know the last team to beat them at home was? Baylor. Baylor. Okay. And Baylor at that time snapped a 21-game winning streak at home. So Iowa State has won of the last 30 games, the last 31 meetings at home with anybody, 
The only loss was to Baylor. Wow. Okay. Now, I don't know that really makes any difference, but I'm just saying it's just a statistical fact. How are they playing right. out this year? Do we have a good look at them of how they're doing with the new coach? And Oh, they're doing fine. I mean, they're doing fine. I mean, the only problem that you do, you do I mean, you're talking about Iowa State, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're doing great. Are, are, are you I'm sure? Because coach. I think Coach Hordberg's still coaching when I listened to the broadcast the other day. He brought his name up more than Coach <laughs> Really? Oh, my goodness. Please, Coach Hoiberg's in Chicago. Let yeah. it go. Coach Perlman is now the coach. No, Let no. it go, folks. Cyclones are fine. You know, the only thing we worry about with them is depth. I was talking to Fran Fraschilla on my Cotler and Company radio show, and he said that's the only thing. It comes down to depth because, you know, without Naz uh, Mitru Long, you know, they're a little limited in terms okay. of numbers, and that hurts you in case somebody gets injured or foul trouble. Okay. Then, But they got Baylor, and then they got to play at Texas later in the week. Iowa, meanwhile, is a hot basketball team. But they're resting right now because oh, yeah because they they just beat, they came off wins over number one Michigan State at home right. then they went to Purdue knocked them off after being down 19 right. they were down 17 at the half that game. everybody thought they were going to lose that game but they came back against Purdue and beat them and then they beat Nebraska this week at home and now they're off until the 14th which is probably coaches like that although you'd probably like to keep playing when you're hot. What about that student that really started to shine down at Wells Fargo Arena? Are they starting him yet? Oh, Nicholas Bear? Yeah, Bear. I don't. He's not starting yet, but he's still playing a lot, Man, doing a lot of damage. He's, he's just, good. Yeah, he's, he's just playing appreciable shining. minutes now. I think it's a perfect role to guy come off the bench that can lunch belt like that. He's right. Been, oh, he's been great. Terrific. He so has been great. keep an eye on the Hawkeyes because they're they're hot so far. They're hot right season. now. They're up to number 19 in one poll, number 23 in the other poll. So we're, we have two ranked teams. Two ranked teams. And Northern teams. Iowa can't be far out of it. Uh, well, yes, they can. Because oh, okay. and, well, I, I say <laughs> well, I say this because Northern Iowa's kind of up and down. Yeah. Right? They lost the other night at Missouri State by one. Now, I'm hoping they stay down for one more game. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're heading on a bus over to uh, Northern Iowa a little later on today. And then, of course, it's Drake in Northern Iowa tomorrow night. Which is always kind of fun to watch, you know. And uh, here's the thing about Northern Iowa, and I can't really figure them out. I don't see them all the time. Of course, we're showing Drake right now, and I haven't figured them out at all. I don't think coaches have figured <laughs> that one out. Uh, but with Northern Iowa, I mean, they're they're up and down, up and down. They've beaten North Carolina, they've beaten Iowa State, but then they lose to Missouri State. So nobody really knows. And they've lost to Southern Illinois down there, but Southern Illinois is now 14 and two. Oh, it's called okay. Seth Tuttle, I think. They just That's haven't been able it. to find yeah. anybody to replace yeah. what Seth Tuttle could do yeah. for him in the paint oh, yeah. and the type of player he was. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that was yeah. a big loss in their program, and I don't think they found anybody to replace him, and that's where they're having their struggles. There's like three guys. But, but, you know, as far as Drake is concerned, Drake right now, Bulldogs have dropped seven of eight, and they had a couple strange games last week. Had a great start against Illinois State, held them at 26% in the first half, but were only up 10 at halftime. My wife was at the game, and I looked at her, and I said, mm, that's not enough. You know, we should have been up 16 or 18 word and then they came back and won the game by five and then got off to a terrible start the other day against Indiana State. We're down 20 at the half, Oof. close to within four, but then ran out of steam and missed free throw. That's been that's been a big thing. I've been free missing throws. free throws at the end of the game, which and, the, and statistics don't even point them out because a lot of times you miss the front end of a one and one. Right. So if you miss that, you may have, I think they shot 59% the other day, but then you think about the ones that might have been. Right. So Drake's got to find a way to put two halves together and also got to find a way to finish. But as we were talking about, they're young. They're young. They're young. They're young. young. And although they don't want to use that anymore, it's just that you got to learn how to win. And right now, this team hasn't learned yet how to win. But all right, well, remind, us, change. remind us when we can hear you, Larry. Uh, well, the game, by the way, tomorrow night is 6.30, uh, pregame, 7 o'clock tip. But then there's Kotler and Company, 6 to 7, Thursday nights on 1350 ESPN. Wonderful. Thank you, guys, for Thank catching you. us up on the Hoop Scoop this morning.